Are they real? Who knows? Huh? But I know. Just kidding. I don't. But science and stuff. So video. The universe is old, around 13.7 billion years old. To our knowledge, it's expanding. Whether the universe is infinite or not is still a matter of scientific debate. Same for whether my dad's coming back or not, but who cares? Our galaxy, the Milky East of Ways, has from 100 to 400 billion stars, with each star having on average one planet. And that's just our galaxy. There are between 100 to 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. If we count the ones in the unobservable, one it goes up to the trillions so where the fuck is everybody the fermi paradox it highlights the contradiction between the apparent high probability of life and the fact that we still haven't found any evidence of alien life what's up with that well even though the universe is 13.7 billion years old the earth itself is around 4.5 billion a relatively long time since the big bang and the conditions for life might be rarer than we might think. Scientists have identified a set of criteria necessary for a planet to be habitable. But finding a planet that meets all of them is like searching for a needle in a haystack. Except that the haystack is also made of needles. Biosignatures, the elusive signs of life, come in all shapes and sizes. One of the most sought after biosignatures is oxygen, which on Earth is produced by plants and algae. If a planet outside our solar system were found to have a high concentration of oxygen in its atmosphere, it could be a strong indication of photosynthetic life. But the catch is that other non-biological processes can produce oxygen too. So scientists must gather as much evidence as possible, like the presence of certain organic molecules and the ratio of isotopes in a planet's atmosphere so that they can make a convincing case for life. Second, the universe is humongous. The distances between stars are immense, with even the closest star to our solar system, Proxima Centauri, being over four light years away. However, it's possible that other civilizations have developed advanced technology that would allow them to travel through space faster than the speed of light, or to communicate across vast distances using advanced means, such as wormholes or quantum entanglement, whatever that means. But one of the most depressing theories is that extraterrestrials might know of our existence, but just choose not to make themselves known to us. Think of it as how we don't like to interfere with wild animals in their natural habitat, just on a cosmic scale. Maybe they are watching us right now like some kind of weird reality TV show. So stop picking your nose, John making us look bad. Quick side tangent here. I'm just gonna rant about how this gray alien design with the human looking shape, big eyes and small body is the dumbest, most unintuitive design ever. Like you seriously think other alien life forms are going to evolve the same exact way as us humans. You do know we only look the way we do is because of our environment and the specific evolutionary path we went through. If you just look at other creatures capable of complex thought in our own planet, they are very different from us. And that's just our our planet where the environment is relatively similar, let alone the rest of the universe. Why is it that the first thing that comes to mind when imagining aliens is something that's not even that alien from us? It's another case of humans main character syndrome since they think that the only creature capable of becoming technologically advanced has to look like us. Which is wrong since all they need to be advanced is a way to manipulate the elements around them and a high level of complex thought. For example, this thing could be an alien. Are we alone? I don't know, bruh. Um, I mean, it is unlikely that we are alone in this universe, but would it even be a good thing for us if we were to be discovered by some aliens? What if they decide to give us the Christopher Columbus treatment, the one he gave to the Native Americans when he first landed in America? What if the aliens enslave us and make us do whatever they want? Ooh. No, that's terrible, yeah. What if the first message we get from any extraterrestrial life is not a hello, but a declaration? of war. Whether their intentions are good or not is something to find out about in the future, but we really don't have the technology to do that right now. But I'll just leave you with this one quote from famous astronomer Carl Sagan. The universe is a pretty big place. If it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space.